Well, welcome back to our fall series here at Grace Community Church entitled Putting First Things First. Tonight we're going to look at loving your neighbor as yourself. Last week we talked about loving God with all of our heart, soul, and strength. We call that worship. We're going to call loving your neighbor as yourself, we're going to call that ministry. But what does that look like practically? Well, let's give our attention to Leanne, where she's going to really walk us through some practical ways that we can love our neighbors as ourselves. What do you think of when you hear the word ministry? How would you define it? What is it? First, let's break the bubble on what ministry is not. It's not just for pastors and employees of a church. It doesn't apply just to our overseas workers. It applies to us all. We're all called to be ministers of the gospel. Ephesians 3, 7 reminds us, of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace. You see, God is on a mission and he's using us to help build his kingdom. Unfortunately, a sad reality in churches today is that 20% of the people do 80% of the work. There has never been, nor will there ever be, a multiplication of disciples and churches apart from mobilizing the body of Christ to do the ministry. That's you and that's me because together we are the body of Christ. What makes you a Christian is repenting of your sin and turning to the Lord as your Savior. What makes you a minister is what you're doing for the kingdom. When we nurture our relationship with God through Bible study, prayer, and serving others, our spiritual appetites increase and we grow in maturity. We should have a hunger that goes beyond just putting in our time on Sundays. You see, we're a minister in all that we do. Let's read Acts 20, 24. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Let's go back to our original question. What is ministry? In one word, ministry is simply service. It's what you do for God based on where he has placed you, how he has gifted you, and what he has called you to do according to his infinite wisdom. Ministry is something that we're all commanded to do. When Jesus said to love your neighbor as yourself, he was calling us to ministry. He failed to qualify that statement by saying just on Sundays or just as staff members and employees of a church. He meant everyone every day. We're all called to be ministers. Ministry is just as much an attitude as it is an action of serving others. Paul gives us a really clear picture of how it's designed to work according to 1 Corinthians 12, 14 to 18. And in this passage, he portrays the church as a body with Christ as the head and each believer as a member. But verse 18 is the key. It says, God arranged each of the parts in the body exactly as he wanted. He has gifted, arranged, and placed each and every one of us exactly as he wanted. That's the wisdom of God. One body part can't stand alone. It's useless without the others. The eye can't do everything any more than the foot can do everything. The only way forward is for the body of Christ to work and move together in unity. In our individualistic society, we quickly forget our interdependence with other people. When God is calling you to a task, remember he's calling others to work with you. The whole is bigger than the sum of its parts, and together our individual efforts are multiplied. Visual aids are always helpful. Let's view ourselves here at Grace as this machine. And here's how it should work. Let's, these balls here are gonna be the provision that we're trying to bring to someone. And notice how, when I turn the crank, notice how each and every wheel, every cog works in order to get the end result. Why? Because each part is doing its job. Remove just one of these pieces, no matter how small it may be, and at some point, it's eventually gonna cease to function. And that's how it works with us too. We've each got to do our part. Let's read Ephesians 4, 16. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. As we all do our part, the church is being built up in unity, in love, in size, and in strength. If you've never thought about how you're gifted and where you can have a place to serve, we'd love to help you with that. 
One of the primary jobs we have as leaders in the church is to help equip you for the ministry that you're called to do. If you've never taken the SHAPE survey to know what your spiritual gifts are, we can help you with that. You can stop by Connection Corner right here where I'm standing on any Sunday morning and look over many of the ministry opportunities that are available. The opportunities are plentiful. We just need people who are willing. My point here is that you have a role in this story. When we serve others with sincere hearts because we are moved with compassion for them, then we are a church that is effective and influential in our community. And that's just another way of saying that we're being salt and light. But in order to be that, we have to open our eyes to the people and needs around us. We have to take notice and act. Ministry can be as simple as sitting with someone in silence who may just have recently lost a loved one or is just simply having a bad day. Words aren't always necessary. Your presence is ministering to them. Ministry is about loving your neighbor, taking note of their needs, and offering to help. It involves budgeting your time so that you don't overcommit to too many things. And yes, it requires focus, follow-through, and faithfulness. We recently held our ministry fair and gave everyone an opportunity to sign up to serve in some way. Let me ask you, did you follow through with that commitment, and are you being faithful to it? Let's read Galatians 5.13. It says, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh, your own selfish desires. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. When we don't serve, the church loses its influence and is ineffective. Ministry is about giving of ourselves, our time, our talents, our resources to help and bless others. And yes, it does cost us something, but God considers it a sacrifice that's pleasing to Him according to Hebrews 13, 16. When we give ourselves to serve others, we're making a difference in someone's life. We're being the hands and feet of Jesus to them. We're living out the truth that it really is more blessed to give than receive, and ultimately, we're reaping eternal rewards. Let me close with this verse from 1 Corinthians 15, 58. So, my dear brothers, stand firm and immovable, always doing the Lord's work as vigorously as you can, knowing that united with the Lord, your efforts are not in vain. Let that verse grab hold of your heart and remind you that what we give of ourselves for ministry and service isn't in vain as long as we're united with the Lord. It doesn't mean that we'll always see the outcome or the fruit, but it does reassure us that our efforts won't be wasted. God has given every believer a God-given ability to serve others. It's our responsibility to use it. Let me encourage you to offer the question, how can I help you, to just one person this week and see how the Lord might use you. Happy serving.